I'm not a pro, you live and learn, you figure things out as we go, and no harm done. Because I'm in a pole barn and I can do what I want with my walls, move the wall. So today's episode of Little Mountain Life is all about the interior framing of walls. And later on in the video, we actually discuss why we took away an entire bedroom from our floor plan. And at this point in the build, when we started framing the interior walls, my best friend Nathan was still in town helping out. So here he is driving the first nail. The very first interior nail going into our new home. Nathan, do the honors. And there was much rejoicing. Yay! So yeah, this is where it really gets real, you know, the the building crew is now off site, the concrete is poured, and we got to make the house our own. And I've said it before, and I'll say it many times again, we are not experts. And I think it's very clear, this is not a how to video, but just a how we did it video. Here's the girls enjoying the new concrete floor and the walls going up. All these beautiful walls behind me, and I have to cut into them. Unfortunately, being the rookie builder that I am, I didn't realize that the code stated that the bottom plate below the studs needs to be pressure treated. Um, it makes sense, but I just didn't think about it at the time when we went out to Lowe's and bought the lumber, the concrete, being the sink for moisture that it is, um, it would gradually, over time, probably 10, 20 years, start to rot the bottom board. So I just cut out that bottom one just now. Got a nice metal saw blade for my reciprocating saw. And uh, went to Lowe's this morning, got some pressure treated lumber. So I gotta do that to the other walls as well. So I gotta cut them out and put a new bottom sill plate in. So let it be known, if you're putting in stud walls inside of a home, make sure that bottom plate is pressure treated so you don't have to cut back into your new walls like I am. So in addition to our mishap with the bottom stud plate, um, which I have replaced, now they are pressure treated, uh, we got a problem over here. The rough end for the toilet it's not even close to 12 inches. When you buy a to toilet, you have two main options, 12 inches or 10 inches from the finished wall. And, um, you know, I thought when we were doing the plumbing, I thought it was good to go. Something might have shifted when we poured the concrete, when we did the gravel, when we did all that stuff before the concrete cured, something might have happened or I just screwed up, which that's probably more likely. But that pipe down there is actually about eight inches from where the wall should be. Um, 
I was about to replace that bottom sill plate with the, with the uh, pressure treated lumber and I realized yeah it's too close so I'm actually going to take the wall here I'm going to because I'm in a pole barn and I can do what I want with my walls I'm going to actually make a cut in the wall go back about four inches and then run it back to the back utility room wall um, on the other side of the post so I can get away with not drilling into the concrete which is awesome um, I watched several videos on plumbers uh, replacing or moving where the rough in is for a toilet so that the toilet will actually fit in the desired space and decided that's not for me I don't want to drill into the brand new concrete I don't want to take a jackhammer to my brand new concrete so I'm going to move the wall move the wall all right so let's talk framing disclaimer I have never framed walls true residential grade walls before our house so everything I'm doing here please take it with a grain of salt please don't criticize too much please don't think oh that's how I should do it uh, research everything for yourself like I've done and hopefully you don't make the same mistakes that I have made um, so number one mistake that I made was framing the interior walls before we framed the exterior walls um, sorry I gotta have my coffee our side walls of our pole barn house are 12 feet high and that's wonderful it's making for a really great awesome high ceiling enhancing the great room enhancing the feel as we've said many times this is a small house um, it's only a thousand and twenty four square feet 32 by 32 and in order to help make it feel a little bit bigger than it actually is we we raised the roof you know raised the roof man 12 foot sidewalls get back on track 12 foot sidewalls well our rooms back here are not 12 feet long most of these rooms back here are actually 11 feet. Um, so that means that because I have put the interior walls up first, I have to construct the exterior walls out here on the floor and then lift them over the now existing interior walls to get them in place on the back wall and on the side walls and such. So I've got one more wall where I have to do it like that. Um, I'm not quite finished framing out the exterior walls and in order to get this to fit inside I'm going to have to lift it over the wall that I already put up so that's major mistake number one don't do what I did uh, frame out your exterior walls first so let's do a little bit of a tour uh, now that the walls are framed uh, mostly framed and you guys can kind of see what we're looking at when you come in so you come in, the, this is our front door. A lot of people would consider it like a side door. Um, it's not any kind of a big grand entrance by any means. Uh, but this would be into our mudroom, utility room. So over here, you can see that pipe coming up. That is for the drain for the washer and the dryer would go right next to it. Uh, behind me here, we've got our manifold for our PEX in floor heating. And then that pipe right there is the water main. So that is the mud slash utility room. Oh, also, I'll close the door here. Right here is where our electrical conduit is coming up from under the slab, and we will have our electric panels right there. Now we're gonna walk in, and as you walk in, immediately to your left will be the kitchen. Obviously our appliances will go there, the countertop, sink, all that good stuff. And then over here in the corner, where we have a big pile of lumber right now, this will be kind of like a little breakfast nook. We'll have like a, maybe a small table in the corner and we'll have a little peninsula to our countertop coming out with bar stools. And you'll be able to sit there and have your morning coffee or eat your morning cereal and enjoy the view. Uh, moving on, this is our shared bath. So if you ever come over and visit, this would be the bathroom you'd use. You're gonna have a sink over here and the toilet down there, obviously. And this is going to be the master bedroom. 
This is one of the changes we made to our floor plans. So last night we built this wall and today we're going to take it down. Um, I came in here and got this wall built and it was on the floor and I could see this whole room. It was like the great room for, was from wall to wall and it looked so good that it got us talking and we stayed up until 1 a.m. Um, reconfiguring our house because I mean it's we're building it, so why not change it if we want to? Um, so I think what we're going to do is take this wall down and get rid of our bedroom <laughs> and have the great room be a little greater, a little more spacious, and we'll have the nice symmetry of all the windows and the doors, and then we're going to take the girls' bedroom. We're going to put them, we were going to put one girl up in the loft bedroom eventually, but now we're going to put both of them up there. And if they really don't get along when they're older, we can build a wall for them. Or we have plans for an epic tree house. We have these really big trees over here. So we have plans to put an epic, like basically like a guest room up in the trees. Um, so one of them could live there if they wanted. It felt started to feel cluttered because we got the kitchen here, stove, breakfast nook, table, um, couch, TV, and a spiral staircase to get upstairs, and it's just a little, a little tight. So, yeah, we are getting rid of our bedroom, and we're taking the other bedroom, but our great room is going to be greater. So now we're upstairs in the loft part of the house, and show them where we're standing. Yeah, we're standing on a stack of two by fours. <laughs> there's, there's no floor here yet, but. We wanted to kind of get an idea for what it would look like and what it would feel like to be up this high. Um, but this is where the girls' bedroom will be. Like Natalie said, we are basically taking away a bedroom in our house plan, but it's to help open up all this space down here, which will be really great. So this wall here is going to be gone. Yep, we're going to take down that wall. Cut it in half and just fold it around and yeah. And that'll be the living room over there, the dining room here in the middle, and the kitchen will still be over there. So. Yep, it will be we, so symmetrical. It'll be nice. It'll be really oh. nice. So that's our plan. Getting rid of a bedroom. Yep. Tear down that wall. No. Tear down that wall. What do you think, Audrey? Would you like your room up there? Yeah. You want room way up here? So you can see out into the mountains from way up here? And you can see out that way too. Yep, you got the little room here. You like it? Do you want to come down now? So yeah, that's a little bit of a walkthrough and a little bit about framing out the interior walls. Again, I'm no expert, um, made some mistakes along the way, and hopefully if you're watching this video before building your house, you can make sure you don't make those same mistakes. Um, there's lots of videos out there on YouTube about house building and uh, even pole barn building, but this is our take on it, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it and maybe learned a little bit. Thanks for checking in on our little house on our little mountain.